Hi, Mark Jager here with JagerPhoto.com. This is the Kessler Crane Shuttle Pod Mini and the Second Shooter Plus controller. We're going to assemble the whole thing and by the time we're done we'll take a few shots and show you how it is programmed and how it performs. Before we get too carried away Please, if you have not already, go down to the bottom right hand corner of the screen and click that subscribe to button. The other thing is uh, in the description below the video panel, you can find a listing of all the equipment that's here and links to BH Photo such that if you want to purchase any of the items, uh, that linkage will take you directly to B&H. You'll pay the same amount linking through me as you would if you went to B&H directly. Anyway, it's a good way to find equipment that people actually use and it works. We're going to start off by assembling the rails. That's these items here. They are available in two foot, three foot, four foot, and I think even five foot models. But one way of doing it is to buy uh, two pair of uh, rails and then link them together. When you buy the rails, they come with a, a piece that slides in. There's a pre-drilled hole uh, in the panel. And if you're going to extend a long way, there is a center brace that you can use that will help stabilize the camera. The center brace has holes for 3 8 and quarter inch. So if you want to mount a, uh, a ball head or you want to mount a stud, uh, you can do that. So let's uh, stick this together real quick. And you can see that basically this is more or less plug and play kind of stuff. I'm not going to put the other side on this at the moment because I'm going to assemble this initially with just a single length of rail. So we won't use the uh, center spacer and we won't use the expansion joint support. Now, when you begin, you need to take one of the end fittings. They look like this, or here. And you'll notice that right here, there is a slot that has an end on it. You want the closed end of the slot to be facing the main length of the rail. So go ahead and fasten this on. Just line up the ends of the rails. Do the same thing at the other end. So we have the rails with the end, end clamps bottom facing up. If you take the all-terrain outrigger feet and uh, you can adjust the position over a large range, but uh, maybe make it like that. Take the quarter inch hole, screw this in easily. You're good to go. Nice, secure feet. Now, there are other options for holding this. If you have uh, C-stands, you're familiar with these 5 8 inch shafts and that with a stud and uh, good fingers can just be screwed in to the quarter inch hole. That then can go in a C stand and you're, uh, you're good to go with uh, holding the, uh, the rails. Another option of course is to take a uh, ball head, take the 3 8 inch stud to the 3 8 inch hole and use the silver side to fasten it, the black one to loosen it up 
that can be fastened to a tripod and you're good to go. In this case, we're not going to use either the 5 8 inch studs or the uh, ball head. I will later, but right now I want to have this uh, stable on the table and not have the other stands in the way. So we'll put a second all-terrain outrigger foot on there. Let's get going on the assembly of the cart itself. So this is the plate for the shuttle pod mini. Obviously it has a this side up and it has a ball level. And if we take the side carriage, you can see it has a slot in it here. And you just affix that there. You take the quarter 20 thumb screws, fasten them together. Now, something to know, this particular piece, if you just loosen the thumb screws, you can take this piece loose. You don't need to remove the thumb screws to get it out of there. It's better if you don't tighten anything until all the screws are started because the tolerances are fairly tight. So second verse, same as the first. If we grab another piece here, throw it in place, get it down in the slot, grab two more uh, thumb screws, put them in place, and another one. At this point, we have a cart that will go back and forth on the rails, like this. Pretty nice. Now, if you're going to go anything other than horizontal, you want to use the locking rails on the side. So, they can be fastened in place like this. They just slip in the bottom. You take some of the smaller thumb screws they're uh, 3 16 and put it in place like that and when you go to tighten them grab the whole assembly compress it so the wheels are tight against the uh, rails and then tighten the thumb screws nice and snug. Same thing goes on the other side. So take the second locking set of wheels and turn it around. Put the uh, thumb screw in lightly. Same thing on the other side here. Now same as the first set of locking wheels. Go ahead and snug everything down until it's tight. Now you can see that we can shake things and it's not going to fall off, which means if you're going downhill, uphill, or you've got things supported upside down, you're basically good to go. Next, it's time for the cheese plate. The cheese plate has uh, a family of holes in it, and basically it just fits right down here. You take one of the uh, screws and you can just Fasten it right out here. And these particular fasteners have nylon washers on them. I know it's a little hard to see, but basically they just uh, span the uh, gap in the main plate a little better. Go ahead and fasten all four screws. and you're going to be good to go like that so 
So, that is that. Now, next, we have the mounting plate for the motor drive, where you take the longer screws, they fit right here, and another one right here. And we grab the motor. And again, these particular screws didn't need to get removed. You can just slide them down into place and loop the drive belt over the drive uh, pulley. But don't tighten that one quite yet. So grab your belt. Feed it up through the gap between the first wheel and the drive wheel. And then back down. Try not to have any gaps in here, but make sure the belt is fully engaged. Then reach in the middle. Pull this belt down through the center. And at this time, you can grab one of these pieces here and you can open it up put your belt in the piece fasten it down and clip it in to the end pull the belt tight come down slide the end fitting in here and make sure that's a little bit loose. I've left most of the belt in the bag so that it doesn't, they give you uh, 12 feet of uh, belt so that you can then lift this little piece right here, slide the belt into the gap and tighten it down. Now it doesn't have to be ragingly tight, but it should be snug. And make sure that things interface well. Now, come back to the motor unit and we'll pull it up at this point and there's a cog belt on the back that goes to the motor and now we want these thumb screws to be tight. At this point the motor unit and all of this are one and if I try and move it back and forth I'm now being opposed by the motor unit. We're getting down to a much cleaner table than we had before. Let's take the pan and tilt unit. It has a 3 8 inch stud on the bottom. And if we slide it over the cheese plate, you can simply rotate this guy around. And that's that. Now, a little more excitement. Let's take a battery, which is a unit like this. And you've got a, if you turn it on, you have a charge indication which we are showing full charge. It has a battery uh, or magnets on it. And if you take the power cable and stick it in right there, you can stick that there. And you can take the second shooter plus and right here or right here 
is the power cable and you can stick it with its magnets on the top. Now, here is the slider cable which it just goes in there, plug and play and you come around to the slider uh, on this side and that's good to go. Now we grab the tilt cable and it plugs in to the back and the tilt cable is here. Now the cables that come with the unit are shall we say plenty long. Uh, I have just chosen so far to coil them. Uh, I will probably make up some shorter ones. Here is the pan and the pan can go right in here. Don't be too worried about the fact that the, pan, the tilt yeah, or the pan unit is 90 degrees maybe to what you think it ought to be. Uh, that's okay. That'll get adjusted here in a moment. Lastly, let's put on a uh, Arca Swiss clamp with a uh, ball head and that just screws in to the unit. Use the silver one to tighten it up then this black one you can use to articulate things. At this point we're ready to go. Let's begin by doing something fairly elemental. I'm going to switch on the battery and at this point you will see the Kessler logo then there's several cho choices about mode we're going to go and accept standalone because we're not hooked up with anything else. And we're going to uh, select manual move. And we're just going to scroll down on the next screen past speed, ramp, set cal limits, and select start. It now says running. Guess what? We're good to go. If we press the slide button, it will move one way, press the other one. We can grab the tilt and you can see it will erect or go back and forth. Same thing so with the pan. We can go back and forth. And at this point, you have achieved functionality of the unit and the next step would be to program a move where uh, you can set a beginning position for both the slide, the pan, and the tilt and a secondary position. These are called keyframes and the mechanism to get there is very simple. We first select the menu, we scroll to program move, hit enter. We'll start with two keyframes and so you select enter. The screen says set first keyframe and what we'll do is we'll scroll over here, we'll set the tilt, we'll say somewhere down here, we'll set the pan somewhere over here. Now be sure these cables are free to move as you, uh, particularly as you, as you pan. So now that we have set our first keyframe, the camera is pointed down here, we'll hit enter. Now the display on the second shooter plus says set second keyframe. So let's slide over here a bit. Let's set the tilt back to eh, something like that. Let's uh, set the pan to be facing 
you the video camera. And now we hit enter to set that keyframe. There's now a screen that says loop, scrub, run once, time lapse, or stop motion. Well, we're going to scroll down one level to run once and hit enter. The next choice is how long do you want that move to take? I've set 20 seconds. If you wanted to change it, you would hit enter and then use the up and down arrows to change it. I now made it, uh, we'll just make it 15 seconds. And the ramps affect how long does it take the motor to come up to speed and how long does it take the motor to slow down at the end of the travel. Right now the ramp is set to 50%, meaning there's a 25% ramp up and a 25% ramp down. We'll scroll down to run and hit the button. The carriage moves to the beginning position, what we set for the first keyframe. It now starts accelerating and comes up to full speed and proportionally all the moves take place, ending right there. Notice how we're where we set the second keyframe and over here we started where we set the first one. Now if we wanted to we could go back to the menu and we could say loop and scroll down to the run button and all of this would occur repetitively. So here's the first move and I can just put this up here. There's one move. Now it's going to recycle back to the beginning position. You notice how we're going to the first keyframe we set and now the second cycle will occur. The carriage is moving, the tilt is occurring, the panning is occurring and it will just keep doing this loop move until you stop it. Now that's the end of this first part of the video. I'll come back in a follow-on sequence We'll do some three keyframe moves and we'll engage the Chaos software. At this point, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button at the bottom right hand part of the screen. And don't forget, if you like any of this equipment, it's all available through B&H and the links are under the description part of this video page. It'll take you to B&H and you can make purchases as you wish, or you can just browse. Anyway, thanks for watching.